It's amazing how we find these adaptations. Like for me, I became like a hermit. So I didn't have to even venture into the world of partnership because mm-hmm. I was just like, I cannot, I cannot deal with it. It's too overwhelming. It's mm-hmm. too, it, it, it'll just take me out. And then finally, you know, I set foot, but I tried everything. I tried therapy. Mm-hmm. I tried uh, all kinds of transformational courses. And it wasn't really until I found pleasure, sensuality, uh, that my healing began. Mm. Was it the same for you? Or did you have, like, how did your healing journey begin? Mm. I mean, mine was really through spirituality. So um, I went to Asia uh, when I was, I went when I was 15, but then I went back when I was 18. And I started meditating and doing yogic practices Mm -hmm. and kundalini practices. And there's no way to sit in a 10-day meditation retreat and not start to experience what's in there. Yeah. And the intensity of that. Yeah. Uh, And then it wasn't until I had my first like adult boyfriend and he was like obsessively in love with me. And he was such a great match for me. He was brilliant. He was hilarious. He loved like wearing like chicken onesies and like lobster outfits and like making me laugh. Perfect for you. He was so, and he went to all the Tantra workshops with me. Oh my God. He like marched in butt naked to a Tantra workshop and was like, Tantra (laughs) is about freedom. And the girl was like, get out. And he was like, you're not a real Tantric if you can't handle nudity. And I was Ah! like, bro, you right. And like, (laughs) he was great. He was a, Ivy League graduate, like tech hottie, who like then became wow. a stripper. It was like, it was, wow. it was so good. Oh and he loved God. me so much that he was like, Layla, all I want is your healing. So we like lived in New York City for a period of time and he would go and strip and bring home money and pay for my therapy. It was like his devotion oh. went so deep. And you know what I felt with him? Nothing. Wow. Nothing. Three years of yeah. nothing. Mm-hmm. And it was right around that time because he wanted to look me in the eyes when he made love to me. And like he treated me so well and he worshiped me that I started like either just completely freezing, like I could feel nothing with him. Or I started throwing up over the side of the bed and being like in so much disgust that I could barely even function. So I was like, wow, yo, I should probably go, should probably probably see someone about this. I should probably (laughs) go to therapy. And so I started therapy and I was doing even more neo-tantric practices at that time. We were going to tantra school, all Mm -hmm. that. So it all kind of came together at the same time. And I would just watch myself descend into these totally uncontrollable rages, feelings. It was so overwhelming. And then when I started really healing a lot of that trauma, like the whole world went gray for a while. You know, It it was so hard to just like get through. And then finally I just, you know, well, I forced us into an open relationship. Then I broke up with him. It was all very messy. I just couldn't, I didn't know how to sustain yeah, love. I it. didn't know how to receive devotion. I get it. I didn't I know it. how to it. be in that level of sex without yeah. it feeling so wretched and wrong and right. horrible in my body. And I didn't know what to do. And I tried so hard for so many years. Yeah. So eventually I just left. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Wow. It is, that is, you know, it. it's actually... When you get, when you start experiencing the thing that you most long for, you get the most triggered. Yeah. And it's, uh, and we don't have any tools or technology for how do you move through that part or, and so I'm so glad we're doing this Yeah. because I feel like, you know, it's almost like you know, uh, when, when I teach women about pleasure, one of the most important things for a woman to register is that she will never want to have a pleasurable experience. Mm. She will always resist pleasure. Mm. It's just part of it. We don't resist pain, mm. you know, but we do resist pleasure. So mm. once you can realize that and you can be like, oh, wow, you know, I'm spot- I've, just, I've just created this hot night with myself or with a partner uh, and, I'm, I, and I'm, suddenly I have a sore throat. Did, no, is my ankle sprained? No, I think I need to go to, uh, I, I need to get a blood test. You know, you you start resisting. Yeah. And so then you you can get, you get like, oh, wow, this is probably going to be a really fun night, you know. <laughs> but we don't have that around relationships. Like no totally. one has broken that out that actually when it starts to feel really intense, really frightening, really traumatizing, really like shit, really like you have to fucking bolt, mm-hmm. that is the time that you know you are closer to what you long for than you have ever been in your entire life. Totally. And people will be like, well, what about like 
horrible, toxic, abusive relationships, you're like, you know those feel good in a weird yeah. way. Yeah. You know the reason you right. stay is because right. you're like, eh, it's such a it drama. feels bad, but feels real good yeah, at the same time, exactly. you know? And it's totally different yeah. than this, like, well, it's like the, the way you feel bad when you're getting what you really want is like the way you feel in a detox. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, you know you're doing the thing that's good for you, and you feel like shit. Right. You know, you've had like your 12 green juices in. Right. You're like taking all the charcoal in the world and you're like, I just want to die right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. You know? And exactly. like the pleasure's on the other side. Right. It's a but, few days later, but you got to make it through. If you right. start eating fried chicken, you're done. Right. And the course is charted. Like yeah. there's people there saying to you, this is just the hard part. This is sticky wicket. Hang in there, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. And inside of relationships, we don't really have a lot of tracks laid down. Or when you get to those parts and you really need like sistering, you need support, you need someone to uh, say, no, don't, don't quit now. Like hang in there. You're on to it. You know? Yeah. And because even couples who do really love each other, who are well matched, mm -hmm. don't understand that. Right. Don't have the technology. They'll just go numb. They, they go numb or blame each other. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, so Anyway, I'm delighted that we're talking about this because anything that we can do to make this path a little bit wider for others yeah. uh, would be so valuable. All yeah. right. All right. So wait a minute. So we're, are, am, I, I, so I, that was I, first boyfriend. I leave. I find like like sexy town boyfriend that ends up in devastating, horrific misery. Um, and, then, and then I meet Andrew. And Andrew was a beautiful step up in that you know, we, we changed the world together. We built life-changing things. We yeah. had a really deep, beautiful tantric practice together. We healed together and we fought a lot. And one of the things I can say is I knew nothing of how to see the divine masculine in him. I knew nothing yeah. of how to truly hold a man with reverence. Mm -hmm. And so I can see how early on in our relationship, I created such a deep lack of emotional right. safety, mm -hmm. of psychological safety, of spiritual safety. Right that I never saw the best in Andrew mm -hmm. because I didn't know about the divine masculine. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, you didn't know the best in you. Yeah. You know, and until we have that piece in place, it's really hard to see it in another. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so, all right, so let's take it from there. And I truly didn't know any better. And that's mm -hmm. what's so humbling. I'd done so much work, so much meditation, oh so much tantra. Oh I, done this, I did the school of women in the oh arts. God. You know, I did, did all, all the things. And in the meantime, we're doing practices every single fucking day. We're bragging. We're doing gratitudes. We're doing desires. We're doing swamping. We're doing spring cleaning. Like, we are being thorough. We are cleaning our clock to the best of our fucking ability yeah. to show up yeah. inside of all that's taking place and all yeah. that's happening. And it still didn't lead us to that ultimate thing that we both knew we, it was ours to live yeah. in this life. Absolutely. And so we were there with each other. Like, like we became very close Yeah, when you were a year or two in with Peter, I think maybe a few more. And I was probably five or six years in with Andrew. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we were there for each other during right. the like, should I stay or should I go? Oh my God. My whole heart's not oh being my open. My whole pussy's oh not being God, open. But I have dude. this amazing man who loves me, yeah. who takes really great care of me. I have a better relationship than most relationships I've ever, ever heard or heard ever, of. Ever. Seen. Ever. So how dare I? How dare you? Have the audacity how dare you? to even potentially consider leaving this amazing thing. Yeah. Plus, if I just keep working, you know, I, I knew then uh, it, it did turn at a certain point with me. I blamed Andrew for the first couple of years. Andrew wasn't spiritual enough. Andrew wasn't yeah. king enough. Andrew didn't do X, Y, and Z right. enough. Exactly Andrew what I was wasn't doing intimate enough. All yep. of that. All of it. So Andrew wasn't thriving. And it wasn't until I was like, yo, Layla, like if you haven't had what you've wanted your whole life out of a man, the problem is you. Okay, but hold on. Then something significant happened in your therapy experience. Okay, we can't talk about it being my therapy experience because oh, okay. we don't want Jordan's license to get taken away. But something happened in my life, yeah. Something significant happened in your life. Yeah. While you were trying to sort all this out. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just bumbling along trying to figure all this out and, and really being like, no matter what, I have to open my heart. 
I have to end the alienation. Like I have to get right with the masculine. Like I know that. And here's the thing. None of my partners that I had were like the one in the sense that I should have been with them forever and missed out. But my degree of fulfillment, my degree Mm -hmm. of pleasure, my degree of orgasmic ecstasy, my degree of being king and queen would have been so much deeper had I known how to worship the divine masculine then. And so what eventually uh, transpired was I was doing all this work on myself. You know, me and Andrew were working so hard, doing so much. And and thank God, because I really transformed myself. And I fell so hard in love, like, like, just like, you know, overwhelming experience. I was just like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't even know you could feel this way. It's like I took MDMA, ayahuasca, LSD. And it's just never ending. I stopped sleeping. I stopped eating. It was like, whoa, right? And now, which one happened first, mine or yours? The total mine. Yours happened first. Remember, because the the best story ever, right? Like he's married. I'm with Andrew, and we (laughs) tell our partners, right? Uh Right. And 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 he tells his wife, and I tell Andrew, and we're very transparent about it. And you know, while we have this deep emotional bond because we cannot control being so in love with each other. We also never kiss, never make love. Like there's a, there's a, let's hold this with integrity, but this is what's here. This is what's true. And I remember you being like, girl, I don't touch other people's property. And then you fell in love with a married man. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, I'm not touching someone else's property, but I'm definitely coveting someone else's property. Like, let's be, let's be real. And I, and I think, you know, one of the things that I, I saw with both of us at that time was both of us went for it wholeheartedly. Yeah. Like with all our hearts. Like I didn't hold, not hold back on the love, on the enthusiasm. Like I fucking dove off that high down yes. hard with yeah. the strength of the boundaries that I was unwilling to cross yeah. because of, we were dancing to OPP this morning. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> 